All right, um, so let's try again here. Um, so I've had some evidence that uh, things are a bit better um, uh, on my end anyway here. So I thought um, it seemed like most of the questions were on assignment one, um, you know, um, it, which is, uh, you know, understandable, right? People working on that. So, so I thought I'd go over that again, but, but yeah, continue. If, 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 if you have some questions, um, ask them, but I, I thought I'd, I'd kind of go back over uh, assignment one. And maybe we can also talk a little bit about some of the specific questions if people want to look at those. So um, when I started before, the, the first questions were kind of some basic ones. So how do you submit stuff, right? So um, kind of let me show you that um, again. Um, and, and hopefully things are clearer now at this point. So I, I recommend that, that you start by making like a copy of this and, and like maybe appending your name on there. You don't have to, but uh, this will just ensure uh, yeah, if you do like a git poll or something, you won't have any problems with um, uh, conflicts and, and things, right? So you can always like right click on the assignment and, and, and like duplicate it, for example, um, and, and rename it. Right. You know, and then, then just work on that copy of the thing. So, you know, you'd, you'd come in here um, um, and write your own code for the efficient version. So, right. So, so your, your efficient version should, you know, you can, you can reuse the header, for example, that I gave you. Um, but, it, but it should have that signature that I gave you. Um, and, and you might want to test it, you know, so, so you might want to, so I gave you some example tests, you can probably just reuse those. Um, and so, but, but anyway, so we'll come back to these questions here. Um, but uh, you know you can come in here, implement it, the, the 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 questions the way you want. So once you've got something you want to submit, you know you just some you just save the the Python notebook, and then all you have to do um, right is is um, there should be a submission folder. So if you get into Mylio online, uh, go to our assignment one. I'm, I'm viewing as a student this time. Click on the assignment. Um, should be able to drop something on here. And like I said, I think it should accept um, a, um, oops, it should accept a uh, IPython notebook. So, so here, again, on your host machine, um, th this folder should be shared if you're using the, the dev box I gave you. So um, if you navigate over to the assignments, um, you should find that one and you should be able to upload that right and attach it and submit um, so that's all you need to do for submission yeah and i mean you know that's all i need is that is this ipython notebook um for probably for all the assignments i think right so so oh, i was still calling the inefficient Probably want to change this so you're calling your version. Yeah, so in my case, it should be all return five. There we go. Um, all right. And yeah, another thing that I mentioned is, you know, do make certain, I mean, kind of one thing that um, your notebook does re run cleanly from top to bottom. So before you submit it, for grading, you ought to hit the rerun everything and, and make certain that everything runs, you know, so. All right, is that, that clear enough, at least for submitting these things? So this first, 
this first uh, function, right? I mean, it's going to have the signature. So uh, compared to the uh, inefficient version, uh, we've got the, the same parameter. We want to calculate the nth Fibonacci number. Um, and, and you should be getting these results. I, I had somebody asked a question. So I've basically defined um, Fibonacci zero to be a one, right? So everybody, I mean, I'm kind of assuming that everybody kind of knows what the Fibonacci sequence is. But, but yeah, it, you, can, you can actually define Fibonacci sequences with different um, kind of starting base cases. So I, I could have defined uh, one to be uh, a five, and then the second Fibonacci number to be like a seven. So, and then in that case, oops, um, the, in that case, you know, Fibonacci one is a five, this is my base case, Fibonacci two is a seven. And then Fibonacci three should be the sum of those. So, so, so the, the third one is going to be the sum of the previous two, one and two, right? So, but, but that's kind of a definitional thing. So you, the usual definition for the Fibonacci sequence is that it's, it's one, one, and then two, right? So my, my code that I gave you is kind of implying that, that we're, we're indexing starting at zero. So the zeroth Fibonacci sequence is one. And then the first Fibonacci sequence is one. And then that means that the Fibonacci number two is, is the, the sum of those previous two, right? So that should give us the same result. Uh, but now I've defined zero as well um, uh, in my base cases here. So, so So, yeah, I mean, if you're not using, if you're using the dev box, you should definitely have, so somebody asked, they're having a, a, a module not found error. So, um, but yeah, I can't really help you too much with uh, installation issues unless you're using the dev box. So one of the purposes of the dev box is to have a common environment, you know, so, so yeah, I mean, if you're, if, if, if you're using pip to try and install things, you, you're maybe not installing them in the right um, virtual environment or other things. So there's lots of reasons why you might not be finding the module that need to find. That should all be given to you if you're using the dev box. So all those stuff will be available um, in the standard uh, Python 3 data science kernel uh, virtual environment that we have set up for the pandas dev box here. So, but yeah, I mean, if you send me an email, I can try and help you a little bit more than that privately. So, or just use the dev box. And then you'll definitely have everything you need. Um, so, oh, hit maximum recursion depth. So, yeah, anyway. Um, so, continue on. I mean, yeah, just some hints for this. You know, so, so if, if you do it correctly, and if you do, like I say here, you should find it's extremely uh, a, a lot more efficient, a lot faster. If you use this kind of memoization technique, all right. So I don't know if, if that's going to be a problem. Or the 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 Think Python textbook that I recommend people use as as a as a resource for learning about Python talks about memoization, so you can kind of search in there. Um, but um, yeah, I mean, in this case, the basic idea. Maybe I'm, I'm giving away too much, but all you have to do is kind of um, search your dictionary. So, so you're going to just, uh, instead of having built-in base cases, you're going to check, okay, is this value in my dictionary? If it is, you're just going to, going to access it, the, the, the calculated result from your dictionary and, and return it immediately. And if it's not, you're going to then have some sort of a recursive call where you call yourself. Um, but the, the, oh, the kind of, the, the main thing about that, though, is that don't forget, you should also, in order to get the speed up from your memoization, uh, if you do find something that wasn't in your dictionary, after you calculate a new result, you need to add it into the dictionary so that the next time something needs that, it doesn't have to redo the calculation. It can just directly look it up from the dictionary. Okay? So that's, that's what memoization is. So. Um, all right, 
So yeah, I don't know how difficult, I mean, I, I, I stepped you through the, the, the steps and I give you exactly the output that you need here. Oh, somebody did uh, find out there was a typo in here. So these should all be four rows by five columns. So I think somewhere I called it five by four, but uh, that was incorrect. I might have fixed that. Um, although if you haven't done a, a, a git poll, you might not have gotten the fix. But but yeah, th these all in this question two should all be four rows by five columns. So that's one thing. Um, but yeah, so so the second one I'm doing stuff on NumPy. Um, We'll kind of, I don't know, give you some practice on doing some, some vectorized operations. So the first few things are just kind of doing some simple um, combining some arrays, but then, you know, multiplying the arrays by a complex number and, and some other vectorized operations, right? Uh, and then um, finally, though, uh, we practice doing some uh, indexing using a Boolean mask or a Boolean index, okay? so. Don't forget when you do um, like an operation like this here to calculate the square of, of, of z and add z to it, but only on the values in the mask. You have to do, you have to apply the mask both on the left-hand side and the right-hand side, okay? So, so, so to do this only for the values where the mask is true, you need to get all the values out of z where the mask is true, square those, get all the values out of C where the mask is true, uh, add those, and then uh, assign the result back into Z where that mask was true. So. And if you can get those steps right, you basically have to recreate those steps, uh, but add a loop, okay? So I, so I don't know how, how big of a leap it is to go from walking through these steps to creating this function as I describe it here, okay? Uh, but, but it should be the same steps, but you have to put it inside of a loop um, uh, as I describe here, all right? You'll know you got it right because you'll get a nice pretty picture. Um, so, so again, you know, you can kind of start with this um, uh, signature for your function here. Um, but uh, put in these described um, uh, steps for the algorithm, uh, where you know you do a little bit of initialization, but then you create a loop that uh, does those those updates for the problem two um, on the z um, and the mask m and so on. All right, and if you get it right, and then you run this cell with your function or these cells with your function. Um, uh, you'll, you'll reproduce the, the pretty fractal picture uh, here. So. Um, then question four is, is about pandas. So, um, so there's a, a file called assignment one data that should be um, in our repository under the, the data subdirectory. So if we go to the ML Python class, look in data, hopefully it's there still, assignment one data.csv. So that's the one you're supposed to be using. Um, so it's just, uh, what is it? Um, you have to remember, um, um, it's some, some like sales data example kind of made up stuff uh, with um, some sales numbers for some accounts for January, February, March. So. But yeah, you have to load it, do some things to display, um, um, you know, read about like adding new columns and add a new column, which is the sum. So, so you have a sum of the sales for each of the accounts um, for, for the first three months of this year. Uh, and so on. Um, so the most, the, the, I, I don't know, I, 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 didn't, I didn't mean this to be too difficult, you know, so although um, the most difficult, you know, th there are the functions to find the missing items. So you want to read through that. You want to uh, need to use some of those somehow to find the number of missing items in the states, number of missing items in the, the zip code. Um, 
and, and then, yeah, I did ask you to do a bar plot here, but you shouldn't be using the bar plot by hand if this isn't clear. There, there's a bar plot function um, uh, that you can call on a pandas data frame. That's what you want to use, right, um, to, to, to plot this data as I describe here. Right? So um, I, I did give an example of um, using bar plot from a pandas data frame um, in our lecture notebook here. So um, if I pull up pandas again real quickly. Um, down near the bottom, you know. So, so let me think. I, I don't think you have to do quite as complex like create, pulling out these groups, although I might be saying something and try, trying to remember what the, uh, what the exact uh, thing was that I asked you to do. So yeah, I don't, I don't think you have to do any of the stuff with the group by, you just have to, to, to create a, sim a slightly simpler bar chart, although you'd also, you do need to use some base matplotlib here to add, uh, I mean, I, I requested you to add, you should do it. So, so add labels for the X and Y axes and title. Um, and, and try and label the X ticks um, um, as well, right? So, so using the account numbers instead of the, the integer indexes that you'll get if you just do the, the straight bar plot from the, the pandas data frame. So. All right. Um, so again, I don't know how much of that came through. Hopefully that came through a little bit better, at least talking about the assignment. So uh, yeah, so, so people have questions remaining about the assignment they want to throw out or anybody want me to go back over some questions about, you know, some of the material or, or stuff? Um, so so my, I think what I'm trying to figure out is while uploading the assignment, uh -huh. so when you click on upload, it takes you to, um, I don't know where it takes you to for you to be able to get the assignment. So mine is not showing. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out how you got to this point. Um, so are you using the dev box? Um, so I downloaded, when you said dev box, what do you mean by that? You're using the virtual machine setup with Jupyter Hub and Lab that I've got. Yes, yes. So I actually have JupyterLab open on my on my system. From okay, how did you install it? Did you install the instructions using the virtual box? Yes, or did... yes I did. Okay, so in that case, if you follow my instructions, you should have a subdirectory called repos. We did the clone, there'll be a subdirectory called ML Python class. This will be on your host machine, but all these these files on your host machine are set, are, are, are shared with the, the dev box, okay? So, so again, when, when I, um, if I go back to my Jupyter Hub, or again, I cancel out of here, did I, did I crash? Um, so, um, looks like my so machine. If you could show me how you got to this point exactly, that's what I'm trying to get at. Okay. So, so. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, back on Jupyter Hub, you know, you yeah. also see these files, right? In, yes, I see all of that. Right. So, I mean, if, if you work on the um, assignments, um, my, my machine seems to have hung a little bit here. It's having some problems. But, but again, if, if you work on the assignment here and save it, like I, I, like I was shown here, mm -hmm. um, um, you should be able to see that same file on your host machine, right? So if you just open up your repository in your host machine, um, it'll, it'll be in there. The, the assignment. So if I open up my what? Uh, the, you open up the, the your repository on the host machine. Let me try and stop the share here. See if I can get my um, desktop to um, wake back up again. Uh, and then let me share again. see if I'm back or not. Okay, so maybe I'm back. So again, you know, um, uh, 
so I'm, I'm, this is my browser's running, you know, mm -hmm. like normal on my, my desktop computer here. Mm -hmm. And if, if you say upload, you're going to get a file browser so you can browse through your system. So you, so you should mm -hmm. be able to just go to your repository, wherever you cloned it on your system, look in ML Python class, the, the directory that was cloned, look in assignments, um, and there should be the file um, that you were working on on your dev box. So, okay. All right. Okay. Thank I mean, you. Okay. It, sh it should be in the assignments there. Okay. Uh, what else? So yeah, I think that's pretty good. And hopefully that second time around, people were able to hear clearer. So uh, yeah, sorry for the technical difficulties. And, and also, I don't know, I'm gonna have to do something because I have like two classes before this one on on, on, on Monday. So my, my voice is already kind of strained by the time I start it here, but um, I don't know. Um, but uh, yeah, I'll have to see if there's anything I can figure out to try. Um, um, I'll try and have maybe some alternative set up for uh, at least the uh, audio portion um, if, if we need to next time. So, um, yeah, but I'm kind of <laughs> I'm kind of uh, ready to call the end of the session. Although you know, if people still have some remaining questions, um, throw them out there. But otherwise, I might go ahead and um, and halt for the day. All right. Um, yeah, if nothing else. I mean, you know, send me emails and stuff. Um, keep working on the assignment. Uh, let's go ahead and stop the recording, and I'll, I'll put these up. I don't know how useful the first half will be or the, uh, the first session will be.